Thank you. Good morning. That's morning somewhere. <laughs> but uh, hey, you, you may notice that my neck is slanted to one side. It's from that crash. I haven't really recovered. I'm kidding. I'm fine. <laughs> but there is one question I would really like to ask. Are you guys having a good time? <laughs> All right. Cool, cool. So, so one of the questions I'm always asked when people discover I'm one of the original members of the team is which character played you in the movie? <laughs> Are you guys wondering that? Yeah, I'm this guy here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, since then I went on a diet, I got a tan, and this is a new me, you like? <laughs> I guess you're not buying that, are you? Well, well, the truth is that the characters in the movie are really different from real life characters. So if I had to choose one, I'd say I'm Yul Brenner, the bald-headed guy, played by Malik Yobo. The challenge is that whenever I do that, people go, oh, so you are the mean one. <laughs> but you may remember Malik is a guy, or Yul Brenner. He was a guy that wanted to go to Buckingham Palace to live. He was a dreamer. And that's how I see myself as well, as a dreamer. The next question I'm asked is, so, you know, Jamaica is smack in the middle of the Caribbean Sea. You know, we're 90 miles from, from Miami. How in the world does one come up with the idea to start a bobsled team in Jamaica? I suppose you guys are wondering that too, huh? An inquisitive bunch, huh? <laughs> All right, fine, I'll tell you. The, the, the story is that two Americans who lived in Jamaica, George Fitch and William Maloney, they were in a local bar in Kingston imbibing some of the more potent sods we have on the island. Now, you know, I wasn't there, but I have to believe that they were probably enjoying some of the aromas we have on the island as well. But, but look, I don't want to start on a rumor, so don't quote me on that. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> but they're there. They claimed they were drinking, and um, they became involved in one of those profound philosophical conversations that men engage in whenever they meet at the watering hole. They were discussing women and sports. I mean, we are philosophers, man. And on this occasion, they were discussing the popular belief in Jamaica that Jamaican uh, athletes and women were the best in the world. Well, there was no way for them to test the theory about the women without getting in trouble with their wives, so they decided to put the latter to the test. And how many of you have seen Cool Runnings? Oh, wow. So now we know who's not marking homework, the home what? Watching TV, huh? <laughs> but, but they saw, you remember, Sanka was driving this wooden car down a winding mountain road. We actually do do that in Jamaica. I've never done it myself because it's really dangerous. I just don't do dangerous stuff. But, but, <laughs> but they saw it, though. They saw it and thought it looked like bobsledding except for the ice and discovered that a big part of a bobsled race is a start. You need sprinters. And guess where we have lots of sprinters? Well, actually, you have more than we do, but ours are faster, so. <laughs> That's just how we roll, what can I say? <laughs> so armed with this bit of information, they, they approached the guys on the summer team to try and get them interested in this bobsled idea. And the response was, Bob who? Man, we live in Jamaica, the only Bob we know is Bob Marley, and he's dead, no thank you. So they came to the army looking for athletes at the time, I was a, a young lieutenant. Um, oh, I'm, I'm getting some funny looks. Well, you guys didn't know that Jamaica had an army? I mean, seriously? I mean, why do you think the United States have never even considered invading Jamaica? Huh? I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, man, those coconuts make really good missiles, so <laughs> be warned. But they came to the army looking for athletes. My colonel suggested that I try it out for the team. Now, my challenge is the fact that I'm Jamaican, where everybody sprints fast except me. I, was a, I couldn't win anything in the 100s or 200s, so I was a middle distance runner. I ran, I ran 800 and 1500 meters. So how does one select a bobsled team in Jamaica, you might be wondering? Well, interestingly enough, the very same way all the major nations selected their teams back then. You had to, it's kind of like the NFL combine. You're sprinting 30, 60, 100 meters, 300 meters, throwing a shot put from between your legs, and doing what we call a push test with a makeshift sled. So basically, you're, you're testing speed and explosive power. So obviously, for me, the, I mean, it was a daunting task because I was a, a middle distance runner. The only test that was comfortable for me was 
the 300 meter run. That's what I did for speed work as a middle distance runner. But you know, I tried and I tried and I tried my darnest. And there were two guys from the American team who had come down to administer the trials. And one of them said to me, you had a good day today. You know, I exhaled. I, I went back to the base, went to the officer's mess, and I slept. It was a Friday afternoon, and I slept the entire night. I was so exhausted, man, from, from two days of effort. And I woke up on Saturday morning. My friends are calling me the Olympian. Whoa, what happened? Well, that night on the sports news, they announced that Jamaica had a bobsled team. And I was one of the person named to the team. So, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited, but cautiously so, because, you know, I haven't been told anything officially. And I'm in the army. They can go, no, no, there's duty over here. No bobsledding for you. But eventually, about two weeks later, I got an airline ticket. And they said, hey, you're going bobsledding. So I turned up at the airport, and I saw three guys who I recognized from the team trials. This is an early picture of us. The, the white guy is not one of the team members. That's, <laughs> that's, that's George Fitch, one of the Americans who came up with the idea. Next to George is, is Michael White. Mikey was a, a private in the Army, a, a radio operator, the fastest guy on the team. And uh, next to Mikey is Samuel Clayton. Sammy was the only civilian. He was an engineer with our railway company. And that's me next to Sammy. Lieutenant platoon commander, and that's Dudley Stokes. Um, he was an army captain and a helicopter pilot. So we, we met George, we flew up to, to, to New York, met George, drove up to Lake Placid, New York, where we met our coach, Howard Seiler, the other white guy pictured here. <clears throat> now, that black thing between us there, that's a two-man bobsled. And that is the first bobsled we're seeing in our lives. Now, this was September 1987. Remember when the Olympics were? February 88, yeah. And that's the first time we were seeing a bobsled. <laughs> that, that weekend, we saw um, a, a, a bobsled track for the first time. And the American team was actually in Lake Placid that weekend, practicing their starts on an, on an, on an ice rink. And, and so they invited us to practice with them. And this is the first time, man, you, that we're seeing more ice than you can fit in a tall glass of lemonade. <laughs> yeah. but, but, but what I call the Jamaicanness kind of came out of us, and we strolled out on the ice, and we go, oh, let's go beat them. It did not happen. I mean, <laughs> we spent more time on our butts than we spent pushing the sled. And I'm, and I'm thinking, wow, this bobsled thing is harder than I thought. But look, we survived the weekend. So by the weekend, return to Jamaica to continue our preparations at the uh, Jamaica Winter Olympic Sports Complex, pictured right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what winters look like in Jamaica. <laughs> but you know, the, every, the, the, the thing though is that a, a lot of people see this picture and, and see the sled and thinking, you know, what a, what a wonderful piece of German engineering. But that's actually Jamaican ingenuity at its best. That's how we train. But the thing that makes me chuckle every time I see that picture is the fact that everything we're doing in that picture is wrong. It's completely wrong. The, the position of the hands, the backs, the knees, the elbows, it's all wrong. It's all wrong. But that's what we thought we had learned in that one push session with the Americans and so that's what we did. But here's a bigger life lesson for you. Ready? You should never, you should never ever wait until everything is perfect to go pursue your dreams. It will never be perfect. The timing will never be just right. You should never sit around and wait because if you do, you'll be waiting and waiting and waiting. You have to start from where you are with what you have. You know, I like to tell people, you know, you jump off the cliff and learn to fly on your way down. <laughs> you know, I've competed in three Olympic Games, or a nation has competed in, in five or six now, and we started there, doing every single thing wrong. But that's how we train. Three hours every afternoon during the, during the week, six hours on a Saturday morning, we'd push that thing back and forth on the army base in Kingston. And then we eventually went to Calgary in 
um, mid-October 87, and we went on a bobsled track for the first time. So now we're finally bobsledding because that ain't bobsledding, you know. So we spent, I don't know, six weeks in Calgary, went to Innsbruck, Austria, and we did one race, one race against the B teams from some of the major nations, went home for Christmas, went back to Lake Placid, spent the month of January 88, and then we went to the Olympic Games. That's it. That is the sum total of our bobsled knowledge and experience leading into Calgary. So this is us here in Calgary on the push track. And it may not be obvious to you, but man, so much more improved, so much, more be so much better. The, 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 the thing you have to know about success is, apart from the psychological part, right, most of what you'll need is skill-based.